forever he will be.
internationally on this viewing and all those others who are watching the uh, faith nation uh, we believe in God that there is an extraordinary blessing that the Lord is releasing right now upon us we so appreciative for the great things that the Lord is doing this day glory be to God last week we began to share on the Word of God on the area of dominion and I'm gonna be talking on the same today I'm gonna be talking on this area of dominion uh, as a series and I believe the Lord is meeting you at the point of your needs today in Jesus name you know at the beginning of this year even though uh, we had the COVID come last year in the beginning of this year the Lord spoke a very, very powerful word. Last year, as we started the year, it started all well. But the Lord, I remember Him speaking to us, He said it was a year of definite change. And definitely we've seen that happen, definite change all around the world. We will never be where we used to be because even in the glorious presence of God has changed in our lives. Something has changed even in the body of Christ. There is a shift that has taken off over in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And not only that, also, this year the Lord began to declare to us that it will be a, a year of unlimited access. And I do believe, God, we are going to access the very presence and the very grace of God in our time. That is going to usher us into great miracles, signs, and wonders. We are living in the days of the supernatural. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 5, he says, I will do a thing in your day Amen. that if you were told about it, you will not even believe it. God is about to do something in our day, in our time, that when you are told about it, even if someone told you about it, you won't believe it. You know why? Because incredible stuff is along the way. The supernatural is about to break through. Miracles are about to begin to happen. The dead will come back to life. Come on, somebody. This is your day, church. I said this is your day. And your time to take your authority and your dominion in Christ. To let the world know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. My goodness, Lord, I feel the anointing right now. I said I feel the anointing in this place right now. God is about to catapult some people's levels. You see, I know some of you, you are used to a particular level. But, but, but things have changed. 
I said things have changed. Something is about to happen that will cause you to wonder. People will hold up their mouth and say, what really happened? Glory be to God. I'm prophesying to somebody that you're watching right now. Glory be to God. That get ready for something extraordinary. You see, that's why the Lord is preparing us. And even with the subject of today and last week about dominion. We know that as last week I began to talk about dominion, I said it is so important for every child of God to understand their authority and their place in Christ Jesus. Because God has a place that he has prepared for his church in these last days. But the church has not even stepped into that place yet. And that's why the Bible says even the world is groaning waiting for the manifestations of the sons of god what does that mean the world is waiting for the sons of god to rise and manifest the purposes of god this is your time turn to your neighbor and give them a good smile and say this is your time and i'm looking at the camera and i'm saying this is your time glory be to god for something new glory be to god you see last week i mentioned on how the very first thing that god gave to mankind was dominion when he created them and of course we saw that in the book of genesis 1 26 to 28 but we are going to look at that in just a moment but at this particular moment i want us to go to the book of luke chapter number four and we are going to look at verse number six and i'm still talking about understanding your dominion in christ part two understanding your dominion in christ part two so the word of god here says and the devil said unto him all this power authority dominion will i give thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever i will give it now remember this is the uh, the subject where jesus was being tempted in the wilderness and while this temptation of christ was happening in the wilderness there was a statement that satan made very clear he said to the lord jesus he said that all power and authority dominion is been given to me all right and he says and of the and of the glory of them and then he says for that is delivered unto me to whomsoever i will give it let me read it can we just quickly read it uh in in a, an amplified version all right can you be able to do it all right um uh, that is uh, luke chapter 4 verse 6. let us look at it in amplified version luke chapter 4 verse number 6. glory be to his name the bible says and he said to him to you i will give all this power and authority and their glory all their magnificence, excellence, preeminence, dignity, and grace. For it has been turned over to me, and I give it to whomever I will. Can you imagine Satan talking like that to the Lord? He said, this world has been given to me. The magnificence of it, the grace of it, the preeminence, the dignity of this world, all is under my care it's been given to me and he said and i give to whoever i choose to give now this is satan talking here during this testing of jesus now my question is was that statement of satan true it was very true because of course we know that this was true uh because we know God had given dominion to 
Adam and Eve. And of course, when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they literally handed over dominion to Satan willingly. And so Satan took over to be the God of this world. And so when he was talking to Jesus, at this particular moment, Jesus had not yet died and been glorified yet. All right? So Jesus did not answer a thing because that was true. He was given the earth. He was given willingly, surrendered willingly by Adam and Eve. Now we know very clearly that is true according to Genesis 1.28. And let's go there. Genesis 1.28. Genesis 1 28 the Bible says and God blessed them and God said unto them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth now that is an indication from the beginning that God had already given Adam and Eve the earth as their place of dominance, as their place of authority, as their place where they will exercise their leadership. So we see God had called Adam and Eve and the Bible says he had blessed them and he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and then subdue it, put it under your submission. And he said, our dominion over it. So God had given Adam and Eve dominion over the earth. But of course, when they sin in Genesis chapter 3, at the fall of man, at the fall of Adam and Eve, that is when they lost their position. All right? They lost their position. But shortly, we realize that so God gave dominion to Adam and Eve and they gave it freely to Satan when they sinned against God. And we know that when you sin against God, you fall short of the glory of God. You fall short of the dominion and the authority that God has given you. We know there are so many today who do not have dominion or authority because they live the life of sin. They are controlled by sin. And you cannot have authority over anything in yourself. Your life is not a life of sanctity. Now the word of God said that Satan says to Jesus, I have got all the dominion and authority and I can give to anyone I want. And Jesus that does not argue about this statement because he knew that was true. Adam had already messed up. But shortly after Jesus' passion on the cross. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Shortly after Jesus' passion on the cross. He dies on the third day. He promises to rise from the dead. And when Jesus rises from the dead. On the third day after his passion and after his pains on that cross. He makes a very powerful declaration. He makes a very powerful statement in Matthew chapter 28 verse 18. Where he says, and Jesus came and he spoke to them. He's saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Remember the first time Satan said the power and authority over the earth has been given to me. And Jesus did not question it. Because literally, at that time, he was not yet glorified. And he knew Satan had taken the place or the position of Adam and Eve because they had messed up. And so, now Jesus, after his death, he comes back with something different. And he says, now, power has changed hands. As I've gone on to the cross, and died on that cross. Power has changed hands. Dominion has changed hands. In other words now, my brothers and sisters, we do not need to wait until we go to heaven 
For the dominion Satan had taken away from Adam to be restored. Jesus went to hell. He went down to Gehenna, to hell. And the Bible says, and he took the keys of the kingdom from the hands of the enemy. And he has restored it back to his body, the church of Jesus Christ. Of course, we know the metaphor here about the key is intended to no doubt to set forth a double thought of our Lord's possession, both the rightful and actual dominion over death and over hell. Because he went to hell and he won, he took the keys from Satan and he won the battle from hell. And not only that he took the keys, when he died the first day, the second day, the third day, demons were rejoicing because they thought we finished him. But they did not know that Jesus had already gone to hell. He had descended to hell and he went and he said to Satan, give me the keys of death. Give me the keys of hell. And he came back and he said, all oh, power is now given to me. And he said to his disciples who were afraid even to preach the gospel. The disciples who ran away the day that he was being crucified, they could not even stand to watch him go through his passion. Even when Peter was asked, are you the same guy that we saw with this man? He denied Jesus three times. He said, I do not know this guy. The same people, Jesus comes from the grave with all power with all authority with the keys of the kingdom and he says now i give you the keys of the kingdom whatsoever you shall bind here on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you shall lose here on earth shall be loosed in heaven somebody give him glory my brothers and sisters our dominion has been restored we do not need to wait for the coming of the Lord Jesus in the last day to receive it. I'm telling you the keys are in your hands right now. The key of life and death is in your hands. The keys of hell and death is in your hand. Somebody shall I take my key. You see, there has been argument with the theologians. They talk about this thing, did really Jesus go to hell? Where is it written in the scriptures that he went to hell to get the keys? Let me prove to you from the scriptures. And I'm going to just quote them quickly. In the book of Acts 1.9. The book of Acts 1.9. And, and I'm going I'm to prove to you that the Bible, when it, you know, the Bible has talked about Jesus first going to hell before he, he ascended to heaven. We know that Jesus ascended into heaven. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. He was taken up. And the cloud received him out of their sight. So we know that Jesus did 10. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 to 10. We know that he ascended into heaven. By this particular scripture. The Bible says but he ascended. But he ascended. Now what can this he ascended mean? But that he previously descended are you hearing me he previously before ascended he descended from the heights of heaven into the depths of the lower parts of the earth where is that hell he descended to hell hell is not up somewhere hell is under the earth and we know jesus descended there and the Bible shows us in, in, in Acts chapter 2 verse 31. I'm still trying to prove this to you according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Acts chapter 2 verse 31. The Bible says it is confirmed again here. Jesus went to hell. The Bible says spake of the resurrection of Christ. That this his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did not see corruption so the bible says he foreseeing this spoke by the foreknowledge of the resurrection of christ the messiah that he was not deserted in death all right the world of the dead and left in hades which is hell 
But the Bible says the state of departed spirit. Nor did his body know decay or see destruction. So in other words, his body could not stay in hell. He only went there with one mission and one purpose. To take the keys of the kingdom. To take the authority so that he can bring the dominion to the church. To let you know if you shall put your hands on the sick. In my name, Jesus said, they shall recover. You shall put your hands on the dead and you shall bring them back to life because he has descended, has also ascended. And we know that he went to hell for one purpose, to give us dominion. Glory be to his name. And the word of God continues also to show in 1 Peter 4, 6. And I'm, I'm, re I'm saying, quoting a lot of scriptures for you. So that you can you can you can get this clear. He also went there to offer salvation to all the righteous people who died before his death on the cross. Why Jesus also went to hell was to be able to save the souls of those who had departed before Jesus Christ went on the cross. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 6. For this is why the good news, the gospel, was preached in their lifetime, even to the dead, that though judged in fleshly bodies as men, uh, they might live in the spirit as God does. So my brothers and sisters, for this cause was the gospel preached. The Bible says also to them that are dead, that they might be judged. So Jesus went to hell. We know that there were dead people there. And he preached to them. The Bible says of that, they might be judged according to the men, to men in the flesh, but live according to God. So it was Jesus' pleasure when he died to give himself to go down to hell so that he can save those who are also in hell. And today we know that Jesus Christ, when he comes back, even those who were there, they are going to uh, that there were those who were saved they are going to make it also in, in, in the rapture time glory be to his name and now Jesus went to hell but was resurrected alright and he conquered death in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 26 the Bible says the last enemy to be destroyed is death so in other words listen to this carefully for those who are so much afraid of death Huh? Are you hearing me? For those who are so much afraid of death, look at your name and say, never be afraid of death. Before Jesus came, death was an enemy to a child of God. Death was an enemy to the people, but not until Jesus came. When Jesus came and he took the keys, the very first thing, uh, he, the very last thing that he overcame was death. In other words, if anybody is in Christ Jesus today, cannot die. And when I'm talking about cannot die, in other words, you can never see corruption because for you to die, the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. There is no death for any child of God any longer. And that's why anytime I think of death, there is no fear in me. I said there is no fear in me. I don't know whether there is fear in someone here. Because I know if I exit from this body, it is just my absence from the flesh. And then I'm present with the Lord. And that is my greatest joy. Glory be to his name. So because Jesus conquered death, he now holds the keys of death. In the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Jesus said, I am he that liveth. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Never fear death. Never fear hell. Because Jesus said, I was dead and I'm alive. And now I hold in my hands the keys of death and hell. And listen to me. Those keys are your dominion. Those keys are your authority here on earth as a child of God. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I want to show you that clearly how Jesus conquered 
It wasn't just like maybe a little kind of a victory here and there. It was a massive victory. Jesus going to hell and coming back to life was a massive victory. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 to 15, the Bible explains to us what it looked like. Sex, uh, Colossians 2 verse 14 to 15. And I read in, I read in New Living Translation. The Bible says he counseled when he went to hell. He counseled the record of the charges against us. And he took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Are you hearing that? Now in King James Version, if we can read it in King James Version, I want you to see this in King James Version. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Anything that was written against you has already been removed. I say anything that was written against you has already been removed. Whether it's a generational bloodline, generational curse, has already been wiped out, blotted out. How? By the blood of Jesus Christ when you offered it on that cross. And the Bible says he took it. He took it out of the way, all right, because it was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, and he nailed it where? On the cross. Lift up your hands and declare, all my problems were nailed on the cross. My sickness and disease were nailed on the cross. My pains were nailed on the cross. My lack and insufficiency were nailed on the cross. If they were nailed on the cross, Jesus made a declaration. It is finished. And therefore, I have no problem. I have no need anymore because on the cross, everything was sorted. Everything was done. Everything was completed. Somebody can accept and give you glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you telling me about generational curse? Generational what? I am not under generational curse. I am under generational blessings of Abraham. Because the blessing of Abraham has become mine. Come on somebody. And according to the word of God, we know Christ made a clear, uh, you know, a clear way for us. Let, let's look at verse 15. And look at what verse 16 said. And having spoiled principalities, so in other words, it dealt with principalities. There is no principalities that can be against you. Dominion and authority has been given to you. The Bible says he did what? Having spoiled principalities, he also spoiled powers of darkness. He made a show of them openly. Doing what? Triumphing over them in it. The cross. When we see the emblem of the cross, the cross is a symbol of Christ's victory for you and I. Amen. And when we see the cross, we see the finished work. Amen. When we see the cross, we see healing. When we see the cross, we see blessing. When we see the cross, we see the things that already has been done and given to us. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. I said somebody shout amen. amen. Then we see something else in the book of uh, uh, Ephesians 2 verse number 4 to 6 in New Living Translation. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 6. Chapter 2 verse number 4 and 6. The Bible says, but God who is so rich in mercy. My God. How many knows God is so rich in mercy? Amen. His mercies are new every morning. That's how rich he is. Amen. In other words, you wake up every day there is new mercies. Amen. If you messed up yesterday, there is new mercies today. If you messed up last week, there is a new message today. Glory be to God. So the Bible tells us, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And it is only by God's grace that you have been saved, the Bible says. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and he 
seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Are you hearing that, my brothers and sisters? This is what the word of God says. It says we were raised together when Jesus Christ died on the cross. You went with him on that cross. You were there with your sins. When he was crucified, you were there. He saw you in your day. When he was crucified, you were crucified with him. When he died, you died with him. And when he rose from the dead, you rose together with him with all power and victory and with all dominion. My brothers and sisters, you can never live a defeated life as a child of God. I say you cannot continue to live a defeated life as a child of God. Because something has happened. You have been granted access to God's goodness. You've been act, uh, given access now to God Almighty. Because when Jesus rose from the dead, the amazing thing, he did not rise from the dead. And then he left us. The Bible says in the spirit realms, he has risen us together with him. We have ascended together with him. And you may see me sitting here, but I'm seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Therefore, anything that is in this world, that is controlling this world, cannot control me. Anything that is killing the world, cannot kill me. Anything that is destroying the world, cannot destroy me. Because I am seated far above heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Do you see your place of authority? You as a child of God, you know where you're supposed to be talking from. When you talk, you don't talk like any other person. You're talking from that realm of the spirit. You don't talk like a defeated person. You don't say, I cannot afford this. You can't say, I am sick in my body. You can't say, I don't know what to do. You can't say, I am confused. That is not the language of a child of God. Because when Christ was raised, you were raised with him. And now you're sitting far above principalities. What does that tell you? You are now looking down to the problems of the world. You are now looking down to the issues that are bothering others. The depression, the oppression, the trials of the world that are bothering others. But to you, it is being given authority and dominion to rule together with Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I said you are above. You are seated above. The Bible says you are raised. I don't know what you are waiting. Don't wait until Jesus comes. So that during the rapture you can be raised. If you are not enjoying right now the heavenly places with Christ, I don't know what you are going to enjoy when rapture comes. This is the time to know who you are in Christ and enjoy in Christ. You know there is a strong connection between us and Him, right? Very strong. The, the bond is too strong. Cannot even be compared of a human mother and a child. It is a strong bond because it is the blood of Jesus Christ itself that has purchased us. Not money, not any gold or silver. It is the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so, knowing that, John tells us in John chapter 3 verse 13, John chapter 3, no, verse 31, John 3 verse 31, John tells us this, he who comes from above is above all. And he who is on the earth is earthly. And he speaks of the earth. But he who comes from heaven is above all. Are you hearing that? So John is looking at Jesus and he's saying the one that has come from above is above all. Alright? But he came from above, my brothers and sisters, and he came and he accomplished the purpose of bringing salvation, redemption to you and I. After that, he has raised us together with him, not on earth, to stay on earth. Physically we are, but spiritually we are in a different position in our dominion. He raised us up to sit with him. So what happens here, when he raised and he raised us, we are no longer earthly. Us, the Bible is telling us here. But it says, he who comes from above now is above all. So my brothers and sisters, I want to say to you, whatever situation in this world should not be your problem. Why? Because you are seated in the heavenly places. You are above all. Amen. I say you are above all. Amen. 
I, I wish I was preaching to more people than this thing. I say you are a babo. Come on, somebody shout, I'm a babo. I'm above coronavirus. I'm above cancer. I'm above sugar diabetes. I'm above blood pressure. I'm above the works of the devil. I'm above. I'm above lack and sickness and disease. I am a That's where my authority is. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's where my authority is. I'm above all. Jesus said, whoever came from above. And you were born from above. And so the Bible says, whoever comes from above is above all. And then, you know, that is so true. Because as, as so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living thing. Or a living being. And the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. I, I continue reading the next verse. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And afterwards, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth and made of dust. Are you hearing that? The first man, Adam, was from the earth and was made of the dust. Adam, dam, dam in Hebrew means blood. Man made of blood. And so, this was a human being made of dust. And as we know, the heavenly man who is Jesus, so also those who are heavenly, so also, all right, let me read from a different translation here. It says, he who comes from above is above and far above all others. He who comes from the earth belongs to the earth. And he talks the language of the earth. And his words are from the earthly standpoint. Now, if you really earthly, you will talk the things of the earth. But you know that you have, been, you have ascended together with Christ. So you are not earthly. You are heavenly. You are born again by the Spirit of God. And the Bible continues to say, and belongs to the earth and talks the language of the earth and words from the earthly standpoint. Then he says, he who comes from heaven is far above all. All right? He's far above all others. Far superior to all others in prominence and in excellence. Keep on going. Verse 32. Then the Bible says it is to what he has actually seen and heard that he bears testimony. And yet no one accepts his testimony. No one receives his evidence as true. Keep on going. And then the Bible says, whoever receives his testimony has sent a seal of approval to this. God is true that man has definitely satisfied of knowledge and declared once and for all and is himself assured that it is divine truth that God cannot lie. Glory be to his name. So my brothers and sisters, according to this particular scripture here, we know that if we are born from above, we are above any circumstance of life. And our connection with him has brought change. Listen, my brothers and sisters, your connection with Jesus or you being born again, is not just a simple thing. It's not just a simple thing. That means everything in, our, in your Christian life. Some people think Christianity is just being in church. Christianity is just, you know, knowing Jesus as Lord and Savior and it ends there. It's a life of connection with the Lord Jesus. John chapter 15, the Bible says he is the vine and we are the branches. We are connected to him. And my brothers and sisters, I'm telling you, your authority, your dominion is from above. There is nothing that should move you. If you are connected with Christ in authority, in dominion. So what is that in this world? If you are the, he, you are the branches and he is the vine. And the Bible says without the vine you can do nothing. Then it means you and Christ has become one. I said you and Christ has become one. And that is where your authority is. That is where your dominion is. That's where you should rule with authority and dominion. Knowing who you are. Literally, the word of God shows us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. 1 John 4, 17. 1 John 4, 17. Look at what the word of God says here. 
The Bible says in this union and communion. Someone say union and communion. What union and communion? This union with Christ who died for us and gave us the keys. He says in this union and communion with Him, love is being brought into completion and attains perfection with us. Alright? So love has perfected everything. The love of Christ has perfected everything in us. That we may have confidence for the day of judgment. There are people that are going to be, are going to be scared in the day of judgment. But you and I are going to have confidence in the day of judgment. You know why? Because Christ has become a part of us. Has been united and we have communion with Him. And the Bible says, at the day of judgment, assurance and boldness to face Him. Why? Because as He is, so are we in this world. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor or neighbor. As Jesus is right now in heaven, so are we in this world. In other words, as He is like, we are like Him in this world. That is a massive, massive revelation right there. So in other words, just like Jesus walked in authority in this earth, was never scared of sickness or disease, was never scared of demons and spirits, and by the overcoming power of our Lord Jesus Christ on this earth, He overcame the victory was ours, and He has raised us together with Him. And we know the Bible says now as he is in heaven. Having the same authority in heaven. How is he? He has authority in heaven. He has authority on earth. As he is so are we in this world. Look at your neighbor say I look like Jesus. I'm just like him. In every area of my life. Therefore no sickness or disease can touch me. No lack, no poverty can touch me. Because I am just like him. Oh my God. My heart is broken if you are not rejoicing about this. I said I am just like him, Pastor. Man of God, I am just like him. You are just like him. As he is, so are you in this world. Let no body, no devil try to tell you you are good for nothing and you are going to hell. Listen, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are just like him in this world. Glory be to God. Last week I told you the Bible says you are gods and son of the most high God. When tomorrow you go to what they see, they see gods are coming. Oh my God, gods are coming. Because he says as he is so. Now, let, let me, let me, let me take you closer. Because it looks like you don't even trust that. Yet. Now, go with me to the book of Ephesians. I want to show you now the book of Ephesians. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now, uh, Ephesians 5, sorry, pardon me. Ephesians 5, verse 30. So just go to the next page. What does it say? The Bible says, because we are members and parts of His body. Now, let us read the first verse in Amplified and we go to King James Version after that. Let's go to the first, 29 and then 30. 29 now. And, and 30. The Bible says, For no man has ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and carefully protects and cherishes it, as Christ does the church. You are the body, the body of Christ. And the Bible says nobody hates his body. But he looks after his own body, the church. Christ looks after his body. He nourishes it. He looks after it. That's you and I. And then the Bible says, verse 30, verse 30, because we are members and parts of his body. Now, let's read it in King James Version. 
Uh, you tell me how, how deeper can this be? The Bible says, For no man has ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourishes and, and cherishes it, even as the Lord, the church. Now look at verse 30. The Bible says, For we are members of his body. Somebody say, We are members of his body. And of his flesh. And of his bones. My God. My God. How deep can that be? How close can that be? You have become the members of Christ's body. You have become Christ's flesh. You have become Christ's bones. Lift up your right hand and say, I now know who I am. You see, when the devil is trying to stop you knowing who you are, when the devil tries to stop, when the devil tries to stop who you are, to know, you to know who you are, is really causing you to lose this particular truth and this revelation. When, when I saw this pastor one day, I was just sitting and I saw this. I literally cried tears the first time I saw this scripture. He said, me, I am the member of his body. In other words, this, this hand is the member of my body. My head is the member of my body. My, my legs are members to my body. So Jesus is saying, your body, your hands, your legs, your head, the whole of your body is the member of his body. So Jesus cannot be complete without your body without you so he's saying your bones has become his bones his flesh has become his flesh now tell me where his arthritis gonna live in come on come on tell me now where is a disease gonna stay in that body where his body has become his your body your bones has become his tell me where leukemia as they say it affects the bones where it's going to live how that's why you need to understand your the, the fact and the truth about who you are and stand within your authority with god so that as you stand in your dominion with christ you will experience the manifestations of the power of god on this earth like the world has ever seen i'm telling you the time for gods has come for them to arise I said the time for gods has come for them to arise and know and say they know who they are and they will fulfill their purpose in this life. Gods will walk with authority, with dominion, with power, with no fear and whenever they see someone sick, they will put their hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. They will cast out demons and the demons will leave. They will speak in other tongues as the Bible says. They will rise even the dead now you know how Jesus raised the dead right you know how Jesus raised the dead he raised the dead the fact that he had a communion and his union with the father and you have a union with the father he has made you to be one with him literally the last prayer of Jesus Christ before he died he said this in the book of John that they may be one as we are one and Jesus said the glory that you gave me I have given to them so that they may be one in us as we are one with you so my brothers and sisters the glory of God has been given to you there is a glory over your life and that glory of God makes you to be exactly like Jesus that glory that 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 manifestation of God's power and glory makes you to operate like him and there can never be anything in this world that can move you next week I'm gonna be sharing with you God allowing me opportunity on the three areas but I'm gonna share one on one I'm gonna be sharing one area on how now we have dominion over sickness and disease and I'm gonna talk on how we have dominion over lack and insufficiency and I'm gonna talk on how we have authority over all other kinds of powers of darkness and spirits on this earth glory be to God father I pray for the revelation I've just re released right now 
into the hearts of God's people. I pray that you will now continue to minister to your people, even right now. The word that I've spoken of God, let it bring and grow roots in them. Let the word of God grow roots in them. That they may know that they are truly just as you are, they are in this world. Father, I open the eyes of their understanding. us with everything that pertains to this life and godliness. Father, I pray for the grace over every person here today. The grace to manifest the power and the glory and the presence of God in this world. I pray that Father God, you are going to cause us to arise with no fear but with authority and with the power to do the impossible. Father, we give you praise and glory. And right now, I take authority over every power of darkness. I take authority over sickness and disease. I take authority over every spirit of infirmity. I curse every disease right now. I curse every disease right now. Every spirit of infirmity by the power of Jesus. I curse it to the root. I say every form of malady, sickness, disease. Get out of people's bodies right now. In the name of Jesus, I command pains to go. I command blood pressure to go. I command pains in your bones to go. I command everything in your body that is dysfunctional to begin to function right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. forgive me. Wash me with the precious blood of Jesus. Now I believe I am born again. I believe I'm a child of God. In Jesus mighty name you. That prayer my brothers and sisters you've just been saved. Please let us know what the Lord has done. And please let us say goodbye to those who are online. God bless you. God bless you all on Facebook. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.